So what's going on guys, my name is Mr. Dalek JD, and in this video I'm going to be showing you the strategy I use to solo complete the 9 Gauntlet. And just to make you all aware, this is going to be a completion guide and not specifically a speed run. As for my creator class loadout, I recommend you run the Viper and Dragon, Wraith Fire and your starting weapon the Mog 12. Feel free to copy my perk selection in the order as well. Dying Wish is a no brainer, but Bandolid Bandit is going to give us more ammo in general and Victorious Tortoise is going to be great for when we need to use the shield. As for Lixus, I went completely classic just to show you how easy it is to complete it even using those but if you want to swap some of these out some consumable elixirs i've been using power keg in some games i've been using nuke power-ups to end the round quicker in plain sight whatever you fancy just before we start i want to give credit to ii steve ii for the original gameplay strategy you're about to see he showcased this strategy in a one hour speed run video this is breaking it down into a full walkthrough breaking it down round by round and adding my experience in too but please Please go ahead and check out his channel linked down below. But with that out of the way, let's run this gauntlet. So as soon as you jump in, the first challenge is what's the point? We're taking any damage drains all of your points. Very simple to not get hit and I straight away buy the strife because if you have the operator mod on it with a stiletto knife, we can one knife kill for quite a few rounds to come and it's going to be very useful for getting additional points. But very simple, just melee all the zombies you see. Round two is speed demons, which is to survive an onslaught of sprinters. Again, keep your strife out and just melee all the zombies you see. Round three is straight shooter where missed shots hurt. It's in the name, any bullets that you miss will do damage to you, so feel free to use your stiletto knife on your strife, but I'd also start working on getting the four champion gongs complete, starting with the Danu altar room. Since we have the Mog 12 in our back pocket as we spawn with it, this will be useful for taking out the champions. Once you've completed round three, open up the debris to the Ra altar room and begin the champion summon for that room as well, and pick up the shield part while you're there, as round four is to use the Mog 12 only. Since we spawned in with it, we don't have to buy it off the wall. We have it straight away, and it's as simple as that, really. Just keep yourself in the raw tower if you want. You can open up the doors in the middle and bottom area of it, so you can start working towards the rest of the map, because we're going to need the rooms open anyway. For the round ends, I recommend opening up towards the pit, and then opening to the Odin or Zeus temple entrance, as we can begin starting to find the other shield pieces. As we get into round five, that is shielded, where you possess the shield by the end of the round. The first shield piece is in the Ra altar room which we picked up earlier. The second piece can be found in the Odin tower on the bottom, middle or top floor as you can see here. If you've picked that up feel free to start the third champion in the Odin altar room. Then once you have 2000 points open the drawbridge which will take you over to the Zeus altar room and you can pick up the final shield piece which can be in the hands of this statue opposite the perk. It can be in the hands of the statue as you make your way downstairs in the middle area facing the staircase or on one of these shelves in the bottom floor. Once you've gotten the three parts make your way back to the pit and go to the buildable bench and build yourself the shield. Whilst you're about to build the shield or even before you've picked up the final part you can also do the final champion in the Zeus tower and with the shield build end the round. Round 6 is open sesame which is to open all doors on the map. In the bottom left of your HUD you're going to have a number out of 12 which correlates with how many doors you've opened on the map with 12 in total. Now this isn't your normal round 6 as there is going to be a lot more zombies than you would expect so what I'd advise is to save up so you have enough money to pack a punch your mog 12 on this round. I then open the door to the crypts as well as the bottom door which will lead me into the bottom of the Danu Ra tower. And finally you gain enough points to open the remaining entrance doors leading you out of each tower. During this round I definitely start using your special weapon if you haven't already to start getting it up into the level 2 and level 3. If you come across any double points be sure to pop your temporal gift so it lasts longer. I can guarantee there'll still be zombies once you've opened all 12 doors so feel free to use these to your advantage to get as many points as possible. Round 7 is by the horns which is shield attacks only. So have your shield out by pressing the left bumper or L1 and just simply swipe at the zombies or aim in and then use the trigger button to use its gun. If at any point your shield breaks or you need some additional gun ammo just go back to the pit and repurchase the shield. Round 8 is creeper where weapons and elixirs are only usable while crouched. During this round the game will only let you shoot at zombies if you are crouched. I'd train around the arena and use my special weapon to help level it up during this round. Round 9 is 9 lives, to sacrifice 9 gladiators on the dais. This is very simple and all you need to do is go to the challenge podium in the arena in spawn. You're going to have gladiators spawn 1-2 to two at a time out of either gate in towards the middle and what you need to do is simply melee them with your shield as it's a 1 hit or shoot them when they are near the middle. In the bottom left 
and your character HUD, you'll be able to see a number tallying up to nine. Once you've killed nine gladiators on the dais, we can happily run away and we can get ready for the next round. But if you don't kill one of them in the middle successfully, don't worry as there is a total of 12 gladiators that will spawn. I like to save one or two at the end to hit the mystery box a few times to see if I can get a homunculus. But if not, don't worry as we're going to have multiple chances to hit the mystery box. Round 10 is called Temple of Gloom, where you have to defend the temple, which is the Pack-a-Punch area. This is a simple lockdown where you cannot leave the temple area. Now, if you remember at the start of the game, we picked up a bowl on the challenge podium in spawn. Well, we're going to need to pick up two more parts which are in this temple, which can be found on the various corners of the corridors as you see here. This is to build the acid trap for a later challenge, and I'm sure most of you are very familiar with this. But if you aren't, then just pick up the two parts found in the temple. Round 11 is shoot from the hip, which is hip fire only. You are only allowed to use your primary and secondary weapons during this, so feel free to just use your MOG-12 in the arena to take out the zombies as quickly as possible. If you do come across any fire cells, feel free to use this as a time to hit the box to try and get homunculuses or a secondary weapon. Round 12 is called Slowpoke, where sprinting is disabled. This is the round where I start to buy my perks, and I purchase my Danu and Ra perks being Dying Wish and Bandolier Bandit. Also, at the start of the round, whilst it's quiet, like to build the acid trap so it's ready for future use by building it at the Ra Tower entrance. Feel free to complete this round however you choose, although I would personally save my special weapon and my Ray Fires or Homunculus if you have it by now for when we really need it, which is coming up later. Round 13 is Pack It In, which is to pack a punch two different weapons during the round. Even though our MOG 12 is pack a punched, repapping it counts as one of the two weapons packed during the round, so just pack a punch that and whatever you have as your secondary ones. I highly recommend at this point to pack a punch your MOG 12 all the way till it's fully upgraded. That's going to give us great damage. End the round down underground as round 14 is bored to death, which is to earn a thousand points from boarding openings. If you slowly make your way from the bottom area up to the Danu altar room, throw ray fire at the stairs and then rebuild this window, you should have quite a few zombies making their way through this window. All you need to do is have your back to the window and then continuously throw ray fire at the staircase as well as shooting the zombies coming towards you. If done correctly, you should have a few zombies left at this window at the end of the round, which you can just repair to your heart's content. I made the error of using my special weapon, which killed all the zombies behind me in that window. Please don't use your special weapon during this round, and if you do come into the same situation as me, run the zombies with you into a different area, then quickly run back to the Danu altar room, and they should respawn in the windows. Round 15 is when in Rome, which is to defend the bath house, which is in the Zeus Tower. This is a very small room, so I definitely recommend training around it in a square anti-clockwise using your MOG-12. There is a chance you'll get a Blight Father spawning in this room, so if so, feel free to use your special weapon if it gets a little too hectic. Round 16 is Perks of the Job, which is to complete the round with three active perks, and it's at this point which I'll buy the two remaining perks that we don't have yet. Make sure you're also repairing your shield at this time, and just blitz through the round using your special weapon so we can level it up to level 3. Round 17 is use the MOG-12 shotgun only, very simple stuff, just train it in the arena with your shotgun, buy ammo if you need it from the wall buy, and make sure to pick up the drops that the crowd might be leaving for you. Round 18 is heads up, where you've got to kill zombies with headshots only. Zombies will not take any damage unless you're shooting them directly in the head, so MOG-12 up close is very useful, obviously, as well as whatever is your secondary for headshots. Round 19 is 9 minutes of hell, which is to survive for 9 minutes. Now you could play this safe and just train the zombies around in the arena for the whole 9 minutes, not killing a single one. If you've yet to get homunculuses, then this is definitely a good chance to do it if you are an experienced zombies player, by training all the zombies around and just hitting the box when you have a safe chance. Whatever you feel is best to have as a secondary weapon that you might get from the box, feel free to upgrade that all the way as well by just training the zombies around. If you want to get some easy points from the zombies, then feel free to use the gun on your shield and then continuously buying it over and over during this nine minutes. But if you're happy with your setup, just train in the arena till time is up. Round 20 is to defend the arena, so you have to stay in the spawn room for the entire round. If you're not very experienced with training, I highly recommend you run with your shield out as that will stop you from taking too much damage from zombies thanks to Victoria's Tortoise. Also be careful of the fire. You're going to have one to two instances of the gladiator knight spawning and this is where you can use your homunculuses if you have them to distract the zombies and to take them out very easily. I saved them for this round and it was perfect for getting the round done quickly. Round 21 is you made your point, where damage to you causes point strain. Simply try not to take any damage from the zombies if you can. Keep your distance 
and use your special weapon when necessary. Round 22 is to have two fully packed weapons by the end of the round. We should already have a fully packed MOG and a fully packed secondary weapon, so we should have a tick in the bottom left by a character's face, but if not, one of your weapons still needs a little bit more pack in its punch. Once both your weapons are packed, end the round and we can move on to round 23. Round 23 is to survive the Tiger Offensive, so I'd recommend getting a shield refresh if you haven't by now and just keeping it in the arena, but we're going to have more Tigers than normal spawning in amongst the other zombies. If your special weapon isn't level 3 by now, definitely take advantage of using it during this round to take out the zombies and the Tigers. A level 3 ability of the Viper and Dragon is going to be very useful for any secretive Blight Fathers that might appear. Round 24 is to kill 25 zombies with traps. Now we built this acid trap in the Ra Tower entrance a long, long time ago. But as soon as the round starts, just be in the arena and start training a load of zombies up. When there aren't any more spawning, run towards the acid trap, turn it on, and then watch as all the zombies are killed by the trap. You should have about 19 to 20 zombies killed by that trap. And all you need to do then is just train in the raw altar room and then run through the bridge, turn on the trap and run those zombies through and you should have the 25 kills very quick and easy. If for whatever reason you don't, just use the acid trap again by just going back to the arena, training them up and running them through it again. And just finish the round as normal. Round 25 is to defend the pit area, which is where we built the shield. Refresh your shield and when there's a lot of zombies heading your way, simply use the turret on the shield to take out the zombies that may be coming towards you. Feel free to chuck a homunculus as well. You should have no real trouble using the bullet gun on your shield with Victoria's Tortoise out to complete this round. Feel free to use your MOG if you need to just to clear up those last remaining zombies. Round 26 is a fun one, Weapon Roulette, where every 30 seconds your guns are randomly swapped and all wall buys are disabled. The weapons it can give you can be both pack-a-punched and non-pack-a-punched. Just be patient in case you get given something really good. Now you are going to be coming across a few boss zombies during this and this is where your shield's gun turret can be very useful in quickly taking them out. Just to reiterate this isn't a race so take your time with this one as you can get a lot of really good weapons or potentially a lot of really terrible weapons. My biggest recommendation is to be extremely careful on when you use homunculuses if you do want to use them during this round. If you throw a homunculus as your gun is changing the game glitches and it won't give you a gun in your hand. The only way to fix this glitch is to unfortunately get a strike during this gauntlet challenge so you can restart it again so just be extremely careful but when the round ends it's going to let you keep the two weapons you had in the roulette last luckily for me i got a lmg so i kept that but now round 27 is to use the mog only so go ahead and buy it back off the wall and pack a punch that thing four times not allowed to use homunculuses during this round so i'd advise training up an entire horde into the temple and just slowly but safely keep putting your gun back and the pack a punch until it's fully papped and then end the round by killing all the zombies with your mog. If you're not happy with your secondary, I highly recommend using this round and the next round to continuously hit the mystery box until you get a good secondary. If instead of Bandolier Bandit, you put on PhD, I would highly, highly recommend trying to get the Helion Salvo and packing that four times. The method we'll use for the boss fight is incredibly easy, but the Helion will just guarantee your victory regardless. But Helion and PhD will also make the round 29 a lot nicer for you as well. But since we don't have PhD on and we have bandolier instead i just fully packed my secondary weapon which was an lmg round 28 is perk oh late which is to end the round with all four perks we've had our perks for a while but if you've lost them definitely take your chance now to rebuy them and also use this round as your last chance to pack a punch fully your secondary weapon as well as your mog if you come across any special meter drops feel free to use your special weapon to make the round go quicker let it run out and then pick up the power up i'd advise you to pick up a brand new shield buy ammo for your shotgun if you need it and your special weapon must be ready to use before you end round 28. Very, very important. Round 29 is the whole nine yards to reach each of these destinations in time. Your first one is a challenge podium in spawn and I'll advise you to have your MOG-12 out ready to shoot any zombies coming towards you and as soon as you realize it's too much, use your special weapon. Be careful where you are on that podium though as there is a max ammo and a full meter which we are going to pick up once our special weapon runs out and if you have homunculuses, you might as well throw both because there's a max ammo waiting for us. The next area is going to be in the bathhouse. Pop your temporal gift as there is an instacle waiting for us inside of the bathhouse and you simply train round in a square shooting using that insta kill. While 
Whilst running to each area, run with your shield out as that will help with the damage the zombies could inflict. And the next area is going to be the temple room. Since you might have a load of zombies chasing you already around the map towards the temple, all you need to do is train these zombies around in a circle and wait until the time is up. Run with your shield out just in case there are any tigers in your way or any potential zombies. Once that's complete, we can run to the next area. And if your shield's running low, I definitely recommend you buy a fresh one. This is going to be in the raw tower entrance and you should have your special weapon ready. Once zombies start piling in, feel free to use your special weapon as we have a special meter waiting for us. Shotgun and the level 3 ability are going to be our best friends here as it acts as a mini monkey bomb. Use it before your special runs out and then once it has, pick up the full meter and run to the next area which is going to be located in the flooded crypt. I would start shooting the zombies coming from the windows for about 2 seconds or so and then feel free to pull out your special weapon. Spray your shotgun away and use your level 3 on a zombie outside of the area so it detracts the zombies away and then feel free to use your homunculuses both of them as we have a max ammo and full meter waiting for us to pick up. Next area is where things get very tricky and this is going to be the drawbridge between Danu and Ra. If you lost your shield feel free to get a new one and race to get to this bridge in time. If you don't make it to any area you will lose 13 health every second. This bridge has a insta kill waiting for you so feel free to use this with your mog 12 for a few seconds or so until it starts to get a bit hectic and then bring out your special weapon. For me, I had a blight father waiting for me, so this was a little bit tricky. But again, the shotgun on your special is your best friend, and feel free to cancel your special weapon halfway in to throw down a homunculus if you can get the timing right. The next area is going to be in the opposite bridge, which is going to be between Zeus and Odin. Insta kill will be waiting for you again here, and I had a blight father here as well. I should have had my special weapon ready for this section, but I didn't, which cost me part of my dying wish. So don't do what I did, use a homunculus, make sure you're safe, and then once that area has completed, our next area is going to be the pit. It's so important you get a brand new shield in this section, and if you have any homunculuses, feel free to use them as we have a max ammo waiting for us. But again, you can use the shield gun to take out most of the zombies in this section until you have to leave. Before you leave, make sure you pick up a brand new shield with all of its ammo, as we're going to be running back to the arena for one final area. Should have homunculuses from the max ammo, which you can just chuck out of the area bounds and it should be pretty plain sailing from here. But if you need to, feel free to pull out your special weapon to use to kill these zombies. And then once your screen flashes, put your special weapon away and pick up the special meter drop as we're instantly going into the boss fight. Having a Helion would make this easier, but we don't need it for this boss fight. All you need to do is when the boss appears, throw a homunculus if you have one, but if not, wait until the elephant is in the area, get out your shield and make sure all the bullets that you shoot are shooting at its armor piece which is on the side of its belly. It should take 90 bullets from your shield in order to get the armor off the elephant, then pop your equipment to get your homunculuses back and then use your shield's turret to shoot directly at the elephant's forehead. With all the shield ammo that should defeat the elephant there and then super quick, but if not, have your weapons there for you and that the entire 9 gauntlet and completed with no strikes. If you found this video useful for an informative, a like rating would be very appreciated. And if you're new, feel free to subscribe for more helpful guides like this for Black Ops 4 Zombies. Let me know your best times on this gauntlet, and I'll catch you next time.